I remember a number of years ago coming across a YouTube video. Uh, the YouTube video was of a man giving a speech to a um, high school assembly. Uh, the school had brought in the speaker as a special speaker, and he was addressing the students in an assembly. And it was obvious that he was an antagonist to the Christian faith. Uh, he was arguing for social positions that we wouldn't hold. Um, and one of the things that he was doing is he was saying, why would you follow the Bible that teaches against these social positions when the Bible made the mistake on the fundamental social issue of its time? The Bible got slavery wrong. The Bible supports slavery. In its moment, the Bible got the most important social question of its day wrong. Why in the world would you trust the Bible to make social decisions now? Uh, the video was devastating, not because the speaker was particularly good, he wasn't, um, but just the fact that he would be allowed to make statements like that. What he was saying is that the Bible, what he thought he was saying is the Bible supports slavery. What he was really saying is, I haven't done five minutes of research on the Bible because in five minutes of research, all he had to do was go on YouTube. All he had to do was read one good book on the subject. And he would realize that everything that he's saying is demonstrably false. And I just wanted to point out uh, how we know that the Bible doesn't support slavery. But just be, And that's a very brief thing. I'll just go through that quickly. There's a lot more information in books and on YouTube if you want to find it. But I just wanted to encourage you, if you have doubts about the Bible... Express them. Research them. Some people, I think, feel that the Bible is so fragile that you've got to be super careful around it. Like, don't ask too many questions. Don't push too hard. It's liable to topple over. Friends, people have been attacking the Bible for thousands of years. And they have made about as much impression on the Bible as a man with a tack hammer would make on the pyramids of Egypt. The Bible is true and the Bible is strong and it can withstand your questions. If you have doubts, if you have questions, I encourage you, research them. If you need a research buddy, give me a call. Now, to the question at hand, does the Bible support slavery? No, no, it doesn't support slavery. Let me say three things uh, that I think are important. One, the Bible does acknowledge that slavery exists. In our own um, text this week, um, Galatians 3, 26 to 28, it says, um, Jew nor Greek, bond, uh, free nor slave. Well, just the fact that it mentions the word slavery, it's simply acknowledging that slavery does in fact exist in that society. It's not condoning it. And some people conflate those, like somehow the Bible should never talk about slavery or other issues like that because it may appear that it's uh, supporting them. The Bible talks about prostitution. The Bible talks about murder, but it doesn't support those things. It simply acknowledges that they happen. So the first point is, is the Bible does not support slavery, but it does acknowledge it. The second thing I would say is there are, in fact, laws in the Old Testament, part of the Mosaic Covenant, that regulate slavery. If you take a slave, then you have to do this and you have to do that and so forth. But read those laws for yourself. Nowhere do they say that slavery is good. It simply acknowledges the fact that slavery does exist and where it does exist, it at least needs to be regulated. And if you'll read the Old Testament laws on slavery, they are always to prevent the exploitation of human beings. All the Mosaic slavery laws, and there aren't many of them, but there are a few, they are all to protect the slave. It, this is very much like the Old Testament laws regarding divorce. Oh, the Old Testament has laws regarding divorce, therefore it supports divorce. 
No, it just acknowledges that it's going to happen. But when it does happen, the woman needs to be protected. Because this is a patriarchal society. She'll have no means of support. And this is why you can do this, but you can't do that, and so on and so forth. So two points so far. One is the Bible does not support slavery, but it does acknowledge it. The Bible does not support reg um, slavery, but it does attempt to regulate it for Israel in the Mosaic Law. And the third thing I wanted to say is when the New Testament is talking about slavery, it is talking about a very different institution than we think of. When we as North Americans in 2020 hear the word slavery, we think of America in the, seven, in the 1800s. And that's what we think slavery is. Well, that is what slavery was in the United States during that time, caused a civil war, but that's not what slavery was in the New Testament. When the Bible is talking in the New Testament, when the New Testament is talking about slavery, it is not talking about what we know as American slavery in the 1800s. Let me give you three important differences. In New Testament times, slavery did exist, but it wasn't racial. Races of people were not enslaved. It wasn't because you were black. It wasn't because you were white. It wasn't because... Now, there were some times where the Roman Empire would conquer people, and the people were uh, made slaves, and they happened to be of one ethnic origin. But it wasn't because they were of that ethnic origin. It's because they were conquered. I'm not saying this is good, but this is the, the slavery had nothing to do with the race of the person. The second big, biggest difference is slavery was not economically crushing. I'm not saying slavery was good, but you could make a good living. As a matter of fact, many of the famous um, Greeks were taught by slaves because they're Slaves were well, could be very well educated and employed as teachers. In American slavery, it was forbidden for slaves to read because if they could read, they might read their Bibles and find out about freedom and liberty. And if they could read, then they could make a living on their own. They wouldn't need the slave holder. But that was not true in Bible times. Slavery was not racially based, and it was not economically crushing. And the third thing is it was not permanent. Slaves could earn or buy their way out of slavery. So none of this says that slavery is good. I'm simply pointing out that when the Bible in the New Testament is acknowledging, not supporting, but acknowledging slavery, it is not acknowledging the images that we have in our head that the word slavery conjures up. It is acknowledging the slavery existed, that it existed at the time, which was evil, but it was not racially based. It wasn't about black people or white people or Caucasian people, it wasn't about race. And it was not economically crushing. You could be very well fed for, you were paid, you were well educated, and it was not permanent. So no, the Bible doesn't support slavery, it acknowledges it, in the Mosaic Law, it attempts to regulate it to the benefit of the slave, not the slave owner. And when the New Testament addresses slavery, it's talking about an institution that is quite different than the American slavery, the appalling American slavery that existed in the 1800s. I hope that's helpful. If you have more questions, you just give me a call. Uh, you just uh, write me an e email. Uh, and if you'll buy me a coffee, I'd be happy to chat with you. Talk to you soon. Thanks for watching.